Hello, welcome everybody to our monthly hangout on the Ecolinguist channel. Uh, today, as usual, you will be able to call me in live and we will be able to have a conversation and maybe improvise some of those language challenges as we tend to do uh, every show. Uh, welcome new people. Welcome to new... Welcome to the... Oh my gosh, I messed up. I want. I just wanted to say welcome to all the new people that I see. Uh, we've got some new subscribers, so you might be one of those people that uh, is watching the show for the first time. Uh, welcome in the community. By the way, this is not the first. Uh, this is not the only show that I run. Actually, every week you can uh, join one of the shows that I'm running on other channels. Uh, last week we did the Slavic languages uh, on the Slavic languages hub and then before we did the Romance languages on the Romance languages hub and the Germanic languages uh, on the Germanic languages hub. So those channels are subdivisions of the Ecolinguist uh, channel and they are mostly about streaming, hanging out and improvising language challenges, uh, focusing on a particular language family. Uh, so uh, that's happening every week. On the, uh, every week, I'm streaming on different channel, and once a month we meet here on the Ecolinguist channel, doing whatever, whatever you guys want uh, me to do. Uh, it really depends on who's going to call us today. Uh, I was thinking that it would be a great idea to do the guess the language show because we haven't uh, done that for a while. So if we have three people calling in. We will be able to arrange that maybe later on tonight. It's just it's still we are still getting started here. Like I see people still are still joining. Uh, so let's wait for that. I hope you hear me well. Yeah, that should be fine. So in order to uh, call me, you will need to be registered, and the registration link is in the form attached uh, in the description box. It looks. Like this, more or less. Uh, where is the course? Or I lost the course. Or oh, it's here. So this is uh, the registration form. You know, you share your contact details just in case I will ever have to contact you regarding uh, the show or anything related to Ecolinguist. Uh, 
so after registration, you should receive an email with a link to the instructions on how to join and the link to actually join the show, the software that I'm using uh, here. If you registered before, you don't have to register again because it's still the same link. Uh, however, it's different link for different channels. So if you participated on the Romans Languages Hub, but you never participated uh, in the Ecolinguist show, you have to register again, just because the, the links are different. There's, uh, uh, there are separate channels, so I, I keep them separately. Um, and yeah, if you want to call in, uh, think of what kind of challenges you would like to participate in. Today specifically, let's uh, make a, a, a call out for the guest language show. So if you want to try yourself, uh, in guessing languages or identifying languages based on uh, an audio sample, you can, you're welcome to call it in and we're going to uh, do this kind of thing today. Um, what else? Let me let, let me have a look at the chat. What's going on in the chat? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, it's great to see you guys. Uh, Hello, the different, uh, we have so many languages in the chat, which is great. I will be able to answer uh, comments uh, and questions in English. If you have any questions specifically uh, uh, for me, just uh, type it in English or Polish. Uh, that, that's, that those are the languages that I will be able to quickly spot and, and, and uh, read and uh, uh, react to. Uh, and uh, but if you want to type in in your own language, that's also fine because our community is my multilingual, and most people here they they speak multiple different languages, so they will be able to understand you and have a conversation. And if you want to carry on that conversation, guys, after the show, you can move over to the Discord server, the Ecolinguist Discord server, where you can hang out in voice channels or just text channels and uh, um, get to know each other uh, better and get some assistance with learning languages, practicing speaking skills and stuff like that. That's happening in the Discord community. Um, uh, Miguel, Miguel Luis Sousa Diaz, uh, how can I register? Yeah, I just explained that, but if you're just arriving, the link for the registration form is in the description box. And you're going to see something like that. This is the registration form. Uh, just uh, fill in the Google form and you will receive an email with the link to join the actual stream. Uh, and by the way, today we are doing the guess the language uh, challenge. So, uh, so make sure that you want to participate in this sort of uh, challenge. Uh, okay, it should work fine. But meanwhile, when, when we are waiting for people to join, I just want to make some updates about the, the Ecolinguist show, what's uh, the Ecolinguist channel, what's going on here. Um, there are some new really cool videos coming up. Uh, uh, we are actually, we, we just finished recording it last weekend. Uh, so we're going to start expanding to Ugro, fin to Finno-Ugric uh, language family. So that's coming up soon. Uh, I decided that it would be interesting to start exploring other language families, not forgetting about all the other language families, the, the, the Roman, Slavic and Germanic uh, language families. There are also some exciting uh, videos coming up uh, soon. The thing is that it just takes so much time to produce one video uh, that you guys get bored uh, waiting for it. As you have noticed, I don't really publish every week because it's impossible to, to make it happen. We want to make sure that videos have subtitles and translations and um, finding the right uh, volunteers, the right people who uh, who match the criteria of a particular challenge. That's a bit uh, difficult. It takes time. But things are moving. Things started moving, especially after um, 
after the publication of the Irish and Welsh video. So it's very interesting how that affected the, the channel because we're going to have more Celtic languages on the channel also. Uh, some very interesting stuff that I'm, I'm very excited about too. And this Thursday, tomorrow actually, we're going to record uh, another video featuring uh, Celtic languages. So that's coming up. If you're interested in signing up, there is a link in the description. Yes, <laughs> you can sign up for the for the volunteer list and uh, help me m m make those videos. Uh, uh, and as you've noticed, I started posting mini challenges just to sweeten the time for you guys uh, while waiting for the, 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 the regular episodes, the regular length episodes. You're going to um, uh, uh, have a chance to test yourself uh, and pr practice your comprehension skills with mini challenges in a vertical format. Uh, they are a bit easier to make, more efficient, so this way we can cover more languages and you know, keep the channel going uh, while waiting for, for the main episodes to, to come out. So that's uh, going to be happening uh, on a more regular basis. Uh, I don't know, what do, do you guys think about the, the mini challenges and uh, and, and the, this vertical format? Because uh, I don't think... Some, oh, some of you probably haven't even seen it yet. So if you want to check out the videos that I already published this week, you can go to, to the Ecolinguist Channel's uh, main page and then pick the shorts. There, there are different tabs. You can just go into the shorts tab and then you will find lots of mini challenges. Uh, yeah, it's also fun to work with, work on them because I can just meet you one on one and we just spend an hour and basically that's enough to create a good amount of um, uh, fun mini challenges uh, in different languages. So you as a volunteer, you don't really have to spend as much time doing a mini challenge uh, than working on the regular episodes. Because if you guys, if you guys have been watching Ecolinguist channel for the past couple of years, you 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 know how much effort it takes to to make one video. Uh, and if you've participated before, you also know that. It's not as easy as it seems. It, 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 it is some effort. It, it, it is a serious effort to, to make those videos happen. But thanks to you guys, this channel exists, you know, because this is, this is a platform that I created uh, for, for the community to have a place to, to come and work on different language projects, show, sh showcase different languages. Uh, while having fun and you know m a lot of you would normally have their own YouTube channels and maybe do do the, the content about languages uh, yourselves but it's just so busy you are so busy uh, and it's very difficult to remain consistent with the YouTube channel because if you, if you don't uh, publish consistently it just doesn't gonna work you know you, you will never go going to be able to build a a thriving community on YouTube. So this is a place where you, if you have an idea, you want to share it with the world, but you don't want to have time uh, or uh, you don't want to commit to a long-term project, you're welcome to come in and we can discuss and find a way to, to make it happen uh, and show it to the, wor uh, to the world. world. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, the registration, someone says the registration doesn't work. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Moritz says that the uh, registration doesn't work. Hmm. I can't complete the CAPTCHA. Oh, CAPTCHA, you, you know what? I don't really know 
that part of the registration process because this is something that Google does. Uh, it's uh, I don't really have any way of fixing that part of of the ver verification. But if I was if I if I was you, I would probably just refresh the page or maybe close your browser and open it uh, open it reset your browser, you know, close it and uh, and open it uh, back again. And that should be uh, helping. Uh, Laura, you will be sending me some something. Uh, that's good. Uh, something language related. We talked about it before. So, you know, it's so exciting. Those this language projects. You know, I can't really tell you uh, about every project I'm currently working on because part of of doing uh, the, this the, this uh, YouTube channel, working on this YouTube channel, is just juggling so many different uh, projects at, at the same time because you never know which one is going to happen next because coordinating this many people who want to do something creative and, and language related. Um, it's just a roller coaster sometimes. Um, yeah, but well, what, what I can say is that you're going to see more mini challenges. So I'm going to keep you uh, uh, keep your uh, comprehension, language comprehension skills um, um, What did I want to say? I'm going to help you with those uh, language comprehension skills so you can practice before the next main episode. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, and by the way, if you want to help with that, if you want to help with mini challenges, you can also just sign in into the volunteer list because I, I do browse through the, uh, the list quite frequently now. Uh, and if you ever re re uh, signed up to that list, but maybe two years ago or, or, or even further back three years ago, you know, you can maybe re re register again, just because my experience is that if I contact people who signed up two years ago, they usually don't respond. Maybe they moved on. They they just don't. They don't really. I don't want to say they don't care about the channel. They just moved on. Maybe they're not as interested as they were uh, the first time when they signed up. So if you registered, uh, or if you signed up for the, the volunteer list two years ago or three years ago. Um, I would recommend to maybe try to uh, uh, sign up again, so I see that you are still interested. <clears throat> yes, Brian, I wanted to say that I wanted to keep you guys on your toes when it comes to your language comprehension skills. So, Brian, I see that you, you are an English teacher, <laughs> so thank you so much for uh for your language assistance here um can you do ancient languages actually guys you really love ancient languages on this channel for some reason i mean i know for what what reasons because we did the collaborations with simon roper and luke ranieri and um and also recently with david Alduina, uh, who are experts on, uh, in, uh, on uh, ancient languages, Latin, Old English. We also did Old Norse. And those videos are one, they are some of the most popular videos on the channel. So I know that you guys really love the, uh, the ancient languages because I think it's very interesting because there isn't really much content online that you can just watch and entertain yourself with there is there is some content that is very academic you know so if you are into this kind of thing you probably enjoy this kind of videos but on my channel we try to make it more fun more accessible to people who have no idea what old english is or old norse um yeah so so i know you you love that and and there is one uh, uh, one that is coming up uh, too. I'm not going to reveal which ancient language we're going to cover yet, but 
yeah, hopefully it's going to happen because it's it's scheduled for tomorrow. The recording is, is scheduled for tomorrow. So hopefully it's going to work out and we won't have to reschedule and everybody shows up and we will be able to, uh, to pull this through. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Jackson Crawford, uh, I loved the Old Norse episode a lot. John, you, you really liked it. And a, a lot of people did because this, this, uh, this video, even though it's like 43 minutes long, it has uh, the highest audience retention which means that uh, the average dura uh, average view duration is very high. It's the highest of all of my videos. That means that there is some, some, something captivating in that video, something um, more captivating uh, than in other videos for some reason. If you have any ideas what it was, let me know. So maybe we'll be able to recreate that because uh, you seem to like it a lot. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, did I mention about my? No, I I I think I I missed that. Uh, I didn't mention that. I also started uh, uh, another channel, but this channel is very specific. It's not for everybody. It might not be for you. But uh, I still have to tell you about it. So just bear with me before we move on to the next section. So the next, uh, I just opened uh, the Polish language hub, uh, which is going to be a channel dedicated to uh, practicing Polish conversation. So if you're learning Polish, you will be able to improve your uh, conversational skills, comprehension skills uh, with me on that channel, Polish language hub. So uh, there is no content on that channel yet. I just compiled uh, different playlists with content that I made for Polish learners. So you can check it out. There are there, uh, there is a playlist with the um, the live streams that we did on the Ecolinguist channel some time back uh, with Polish conversation practice. Uh, you really liked it, so I decided that I want to go back to that format. Of course, those who those of you who are learning Polish uh, liked it. Uh, so I decided that uh, I'm going to create a different channel for that particular uh, topic. So we are not going to be disturbing everybody else who is not into Polish uh, because you are on the Eco Language channel for other languages, which is fine. Uh, there's going to be more of that on the Eco Language channel and we're going to move over to the Polish language hub to practice Polish and do some more fun things with Polish live streams and uh, some uh, video, uh, playing video games in Pol Polish. If you're interested, just subscribe. And this month, it's April now, so this month I'm, I'm planning to launch it and actually start uh, uh, showing up there regularly, consistently. So you're welcome to join me there. Meanwhile, you can just register for this show because I see two people are calling and I'm going to start adding uh, them into the stream. But you have your last chance to uh, to sign up before we, uh, we, we move on to the challenge that I have in mind. Um. Okay, so let's add... Moritz first. Okay, Moritz. I'm going to add you now. So, hello. Hi. Hi, Moritz. Welcome back to the show. Hi. Hi. Yes, Moritz. So, just a quick introduction. Maybe you could introduce yourself in North Frisian so we can hear uh, the language. And see how much we can uh, understand. <laughs> okay. Um, mein, ich bin Moritz. Um, ich bin uh, 24 Jahre alt. 
Ähm, ich komme von äh, Deutschland, ich wohne in Deutschland, ich bin Bern in Deutschland und ähm, ich studiere nur ähm, empirisch äh, Sprachwissenschaften an der Universität in Kiel äh, in Deutschland. Ähm, ich habe auch nicht in nur Friesland, hat es einen Bereich bei Deutschlands Grenz, ähm, und ich habe auch nicht in Eilen, äh, das Eilen jüt äh, soll. Ja. Und davor kann ich äh, in Bett Fries nagen. Mm -hmm. Great, so this has been North Frisian language. Uh, and you mentioned that you you live in, uh, on an island, right? Is it an island or uh, is it peninsula? I uh, I uh, grew up there. I don't live there anymore. I'm currently uh, studying at a university on the German mainland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is uh, the North uh, Frisian, uh, uh, which you know you guys can if you are interested uh, in learning more about North Frisian we have a video dedicated to, to the language uh, on the Ecolinguist channel and um, you also talked about it extensively on the Germanic language hub in one of the streams so you can check this out uh, yeah so this is North Frisian and today the the challenge I was thinking about that we wanted to do I don't know if you if you've heard about it maybe you just joined we were talking about the, uh, uh, the, the guess the language challenge. Uh, I think that could be interesting. I'm going, going to play some language samples and you would have to guess or identify the language uh, that is played. So that's, that's the idea. Are you okay with that? <laughs> okay, ready to embarrass myself, but okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, you're not going to be embarrassing uh, yourself alone because there is another <laughs> player that is, is just calling in. Uh, so let me add, uh, add Leonardo, that is also a frequent caller. Um, let me, uh, oh, Leonardo, I can't see you. I think your camera is off. Oh, okay, great. You have your headset and everything. So let me switch to the other. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Leonardo, welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah. Yes, nice, nice to see you as usual. So Leonardo, maybe you could introduce yourself, but you can introduce yourself in one of the languages that you speak. Okay. Um, to make things more interesting. May I use Mandarin this time? Great. Why not? Hello. <laughs> Leonardo 冰铁什么啊？我说都没忘了，就是没关系。呃，就是嗯嗯，我都在佛罗伦萨，我是嗯呃，就是我忘了，我说嗯呃，我十七岁，对啊。Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> great. So I understood Italian there. Okay. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, so, uh, uh, Leonardo, you are bilingual, naturally bilingual. You speak Dutch yeah. and Italian exactly. as your native languages. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you're studying uh, Chinese. Uh, yeah. Which one? Mandarin, right? Is it Mandarin you study? Mandarin, Mandarin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. I'm just wondering, like, uh, if you are in terms of your sound sound quality just just because maybe there is a little bit of disturbance there you have your headset so that's yeah. great yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just not sure if you are you if it's connected could you just tap it like this just to see okay it should be good should be yeah sure oh yeah just now it's better yeah <laughs> so okay. something something happened there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm I'm on the internal microphone. Internal microphone means that when I'm connected with the headset, it immediately switches to it. So uh, yeah. 
Okay, I think it's gonna be fine. Maybe it's just because you were speaking uh, Mandarin, I, I I had trouble understanding <laughs> you. Maybe that's the reason. Okay. <laughs> uh, surprise, right? So so okay, guys. So today uh, uh, I would like to do the guess the language challenge. Um, so to do that, uh, we will have to use the the buzzing system. Okay. Uh, so let me see that. I'm going to send you the link to the buzzers so you can join into the buzzers and then after i start playing the sample you will be able to buzz in and uh, you'll be able to give your answer okay um Hold up. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we can just try to join but uh buzz in, is it buzz in the live it's going to be buzzing into into the live stream, yes. So so. No, no, um, but it, it's, what is buzzing dot live, right? Ah, buzzing dot live. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, <laughs> that's that's the name <laughs> of the buzzer. No problem. So shall I just join the game? Just join the game, yeah. Moritz, you also can do that. Well, you can join it on your devices, or you can join it on other devices. Yeah. Like if you have a phone or something else, you can also join there and just use your touch screen to to buzz otherwise you can also just use your uh, space bar to buzz in and everybody watching you will be able to also participate just you know type the the language that you think it is in the the chat oh. mm. uh, and yes and if nobody else is calling we're just going to uh, to do it uh, uh, as is, so with Moritz and Leonardo. And what level do you guys want to uh, well, try? People say that I have um, really bad uh, bad sound quality from me, but is it is it better now? It's now it's better, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, what level do you guys want to do? Uh, there is. Um, Beginner, easy, medium, or hard. We're not doing. We are not doing the beginner. That's for sure. <laughs> sure. Moritz, what would you be voting for? Easy, medium, or hard? I think we can start with medium and then uh, go up from there. Sure. Medium. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay, cool. guys. Cool. So I see you joined the um, uh, the buzzer. The buzzer. Could you just maybe buzz in just to see if it works? Okay, that's Moritz. And now Leonardo. Okay, that works. So after you buzz in, you know, uh, I will be telling you who buzzed in first. Okay, so wait for me to, to call your name before before you say the answer. Uh, I cleared the buzzer. We're going to start so with medium. I can, just, I can just buzz with my space bar, right? Space bar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, good. So I think we are ready to, to start with the first one. And by the way, there is also one, one thing that might happen because I, don't, I haven't really selected the, these uh, language samples myself. They're randomly generated by the computer. So you, uh, if you hear your own language, um, which is going to be so obvious, Basically, it's yeah, yeah. so obvious that it's, it should never be a concern. We're just gonna okay. know that it's it's your language, anyways. Uh, yeah, so let's start. Den fælles forståelse af disse rettigheder og friheder er den største betydning for den fulde virkeliggørelse af denne forpligtelse. Proklamerer plenar. Okay, Moritz. Ja, yeah, uh, det er dansk. Uh, Danish. Danish. Yes. It's Danish. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, actually, I'm having, I'm having issues on buzzing in because if I press my space bar, it doesn't buzz. Oh, it doesn't? Uh huh. So, so what do you need to do to buzz in? I need to click on the buzzer. So, wait a second because I am going to take my phone and join on the buzzing.live with my phone because it's easier like this. Okay, okay. Good. So first of all, uh, 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 Moritz, what gave it away as Danish to you? Um, I'm basically fluent in Danish, and uh, it's 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 a, it's a language I speak in my everyday life a lot, and I study Danish language at university. So yeah. 
Okay, so that means that we're not going to count this as uh, a point for you. Yeah. <laughs> because that would yes. be a bit unfair. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah but obviously we, we're going to encounter languages like that. So people still in the chat, they can still uh, make a guess. And um, a... If, if, if I know it for certain, shouldn't I just don't buzzer at all? Is that a better better solution? Yeah. I just... Okay. Mm, let me think well, about the rules because well, <laughs> you... if, it's, if it's your native language then i think you mustn't even buzz in because no no because we're gonna know it immediately mm, um yeah. but uh, okay. well, that was my fault i accidentally buzzed into uh because i touched my phone uh... okay okay so so now I... I'm here, I'm here in orbit, so uh, yeah. Great, so, so you have it uh, uh, sorted, yeah. that's great. I think my phone is a buzzer, yeah. So we're probably going to have the situation that uh, you, you're going to hear languages that you studied extensively, right? Uh, yeah. So still, uh, you don't have to buzz in uh, when you study that language, but later think about like, what are the identifiers of of this language like why do you think this is yeah. this, you know um what yeah we can think about like how to distinguish that language like danish from that swedish makes it really, that makes it interesting exactly so uh, leonardo would you have guessed danish in this case um actually i heard um magnus speak quite a lot so i would have got that got, got that got that yeah Mm -hmm. Yes, but but th this this kind of this is your personal experience with the language, right? Uh, but if you had to identify a, a feature of Danish that is very Danish, what would you say? Oh, well, um, actually, at the beginning, it sounded to me like German, and then something was off. There was like some. Uh, th it sounded similar, but then I said, like, actually, I speak German, so I said, like, oh, but this can't be German. There is really something off to it. And a lot of um, uh, letters which are totally swallowed and basically don't exist. A lot of vowel, uh, a lot of consonants disappear and stuff like that. And that really makes it clear that it's Danish because the sound sometimes is similar to German, but then you get into the situation and you hear swollen um, consonants and stuff like this, and that cannot be German because actually, basically every single consonant is pronounced in German, so you don't have those um, consonants disappearing in characteristics like that. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Moritz? Because you studied Danish, so maybe you we can talk about some features. Yeah, so the phonology is generally very similar to German, but um, there are a lot of silent letters and um, yeah. a lot of diphthongs, a lot of polyphthongs. A Danish has a pentiphthong, so f five yeah. vowels in one, in one syllable. And uh, Danish also has a dental approximant that doesn't really exist in other languages. Yeah. Uh, Bleu D, uh, this is the sound in Jai Hill. Um, yeah, yeah. which sounds a little uh -huh. bit, mm -hmm. yeah, which sounds a little bit muffled. Um, yeah, uh, those are I would say the clear clearest identifier. Also, that the German R uh, is also present. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's the kind of answer I I, I want from you guys. <laughs> you are agreeing with the fact that it might have seemed German with something off to me. Uh, it's fine. It's it's fine because this is the language comparison aspect of of the answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, I think it's always a case from which perspective you are looking onto a language. Yeah. I think from a Dutch yeah. from a Dutch perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense. From a German perspective, Danish sounds more like adorable, <laughs> like mm -hmm. like very mm -hmm. soft, very very friendly. Uh, yeah. uh, no German. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. So let's move on to the next one then. Mm, okay, that's going to be interesting. So uh, <clears throat> let me set this up. Oh, actually, I'm going to take this out on this side. Gidagi das nu tokusosin surpas vazazdin doni naritol 
Հայաստանիա ծարակելական եգեղեցվո դիկնանց մարմնի տարեկանի կաշկերութը դեղի բիտունենա հավար։ Լոնարդո։ It sounds something like Tagalog for me, because I heard all sort of Spanish words there. Okay, so that's not Tagalog. No. Morris, do you want to listen to the sample again, or you have a guess? Okay. Գիրագի 18 օգոստոսին Սուրբ Աստվազազնին Դոնի Նարիթով Հայաստանիա ծառակալական եգերեսվո դիկնանց մարմնի տարեկան ճաշկերույթը դեղի բդունենա Հավարտ Սուրբ եւ Ամմա հապատարակի եգերեսվո Էդգարյան Սրահին մեջ դեղեգություններու եւ դոմսերը ստանալու համար հերացայնել 9484830 կամ եգերեսվո Քրասինյակ 9419856 համառներուն Աժամանցի Մելբրնի հայդարարություններուն Հայ կաթողիկը եգեղեցին գդերեգացն է որ սուրբասվազազնի վերափոխման դոնին նարիթով սուպադարակը եւ խաղորդ նեքի արարողությունը դեղի բդունենա շապատ օգոստոս 10-ին գեսորի այդ գժամը 5-ին հայ This is a very long sample. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I have another guess but let let let, let Morris guess. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, should, should I buzz in again or No, you don't have to I... buzz in. No, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually You, yeah you yeah that's fine i'm actually really unsure <laughs> um i um yeah i or, or, always oriented myself around the phonology and i think i heard aspect that sounded a little bit slavic a little bit romance but it could be also something very very different like a turk language um my guess would be that it's in the european but I'm 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 just not sure. I, I I don't think I'm I'm confident enough to make a guess. Um I don't think I got enough from any uh language family uh, understood enough to make a guess. Yeah. No guess. Okay. Uh so let's see what what people are saying in the comment section before we ask Leonardo about his guess. So, um Steven thinks it could be Spanish or Catalan. Laura uh, thinks it's Greek. Uh, Artemis thinks of uh, Armenian. Laura changed her uh, opinion to Macedonian. Uh, uh, Zaga thinks of uh, Georgian. Um, mm, uh, Luke no, no thinks it's not Greek. <laughs> So yes. <laughs> and and Basque. Basque is also an interesting guess. Uh however, let's ask to like let's ask Leonardo before we move on. Albanian maybe. You said Albanian? Yeah. It's it's wrong again. So, guys, the the person that got it right was Artemis. It's Armenian. Armenian, yes. So it is an Indo-European language uh, spoken primarily in Armenia and Armenian diaspora worldwide. Mm. Oh, let's let. Oh, there is. I found some information about phonology, but it's going to be difficult to decipher. Uh, oh, Armenian has a rich phonological system, including a large number of consonant sounds. One notable, uh, one notable feature is the presence of voiceless and voiced stop consonants, as well as wow. the aspirated counterparts. Uh, and I've got them spelled out here, but I don't know how to read that. So maybe Moritz would help potentially. <laughs> how would you read those? Okay, th- those aren't uh, phonetic transcriptions, but um, I would probably ha- they have a distinction with uh, stops that are, is a voiceless, a voiced, and a voiceless uh, aspirated. So b, p, and and uh, p, uh, basically three three different realizations of that articulation uh, space. But I'm I, I, as a, as a German, it's not really uh, easy to pronounce because we don't have this distinction. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so that was a good, uh, good guess for, for Artemis, so well done Artemis. Uh, yeah, but now you, you guys know how to distinguish uh, phonological features of Armenia, <laughs> more or less, <laughs> more or less. Uh, good, good, good. 
So I think we're going to be ready for. Wait, 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 because I got to get in again because it's it was I got into a bug. Okay. I'm just mm -hmm. going to nine eight eight, and then I'm going to put my name again, and I'm in again. Mm -hmm. Just the, just for the buzzer, I meant. Just for the buzzer. Okay. Okay. So let's listen to <clears throat> the language number three. Zakon zaručil kulturnu autonomiju prislušnika u menšin v oblasti vzdelavanja, kulturi informovanja, uradne upouživanja jazika. Leonardo? Romanian. No, it's not Romanian. Uh, let's listen to it again. Zakon zaručil kulturnu autonomiju prislušnika u menšin v oblasti vzdelavanja, kulturi informovanja, uradne upouživanja jazika, pisma. Um, who buzzed in now? Uh, I did. Moritz, yes, yes, sorry. Yes, Moritz, yes, what's your answer? Maybe Ukrainian? Nope, it's not Ukrainian. Uh, so we're going to listen to it again and try to decipher which language it is. Maybe we're going to let uh, people in the chat to, to make their guesses also. Uh, and yeah, so w after one person buzzes in and answers, the, 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 the next round we play the, the sample is for the other person only uh, uh, to have okay. some more time. Yeah, I mean, it's not as uh, vibrant or, or spectacular when you have only two players. Usually the buzz in system works better when we have three people <laughs> calling in, yeah. um, but but it still kind of uh, gives some structure to to the challenge, so it, it's helpful. Okay, let's see what answers we've got here. Um, uh, Zaga thinks it's Slovenian. Artemis says it's Slovak. Uh, Kony says it's Croatian. Harold says it's Slovenian. Uh, Rozvihir, Croatian. Uh, Slovatsky. Uh, Vadim says it's Slovatsky, which is Slo Slovakian. Uh, Sylvia you, says it's Bulgarian. Can you read Cyrillic? Uh, what? Uh, to some extent, yes. <laughs> like okay. simple words, you know, and stuff okay. like that. Uh, and we, yeah, we, we, we've got a lots of people saying it's Slovak, Slovakian, Greek or Bulgarian. Brian says it's Bulgarian. There is so many uh, coming in. Uh, Wati says it's Vulcan. Uh, <laughs> mm, interesting. <laughs> uh, and Fra Francisca Zita says it's Turkish or a Turkish related language. So did any of those suggestions help you guys narrow it down a little bit? I still think it's a it's a Slavic language, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm just it's just not my expertise to distinguish between Eastern, Western, and Southern Slavic languages. So, I, I I'd be happy with every <laughs> answer uh, that was in the okay. chat, except uh, maybe Greek. I I don't think it's Greek. No, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, so the the correct answer is. Let me just scroll uh, the comments. Oh, it, again, it's Artemis saying it's Slovak. It's Slovak, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of difficult. It's, a, it's It was a very difficult example because distinguishing Slovak and Czech requires a lot of linguistic knowledge. Yeah. Because their languages are so similar and there are some, some small differences uh, let me see if I can find any any examples. Mm. Uh, For example, that, that that fact of the r sound, which is present in in um, in Czech, but not in Slovak, if I don't mistake. Yes, yes, exactly. You you are correct. Uh, we're talking about the r sound, yeah. which is spelled like the R with a, with a dash, like it's rzz, rzz. Uh, 
so we don't have that in Slovak. And again, the, the problem here is that it's a dialect continuum. So if you come closer to the Slovakian and, uh, and Czech border, the dialects there, the vernaculars there could uh, use that uh, consonant. So it, that was it was a particularly difficult example, guys. Mm. And we also I also found this feature. I'm not sure how to read that because it's the phonetic uh, uh, oh. alphabet. Maybe more it's going to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Eh. So exactly. Slovak has a long eh, eh which is absent yeah. in Czech. Eh. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's in here. And the last one that we would like to uh, focus on is the fact that uh, Czech uses vowel length to differentiate between certain words, while Slovak vowel length serves a more prosodic function. Mm -hmm. What is a prosodic function? Um. <laughs> uh, it's basically the, the, the speech melody, uh, how the language uh, flows, uh, how certain uh, sounds are higher and lower and which uh, and what those uh, expresses. There are prosodic languages that distinguish also um, meaning by uh, uh, I think an example in English would be irony <laughs> that you inflect in a certain way to express irony. Yeah, so that's this would be a prosodic uh, way. Mm -hmm. to So that's how it how, how it's used in Slovak, but in Czech it has an extra function. So it's mm -hmm. You really need to like analyze the sample in depth to be able to tell that this is Slovak and this is Czech. Uh, yeah, but it uh, it was a good example, uh, uh, and we could discuss this. Uh, yeah. So let's move on to the next one then. Uh, wait, because <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm here. Brothers are yeah. clear. Mm -hmm. Amnistía Internacional publicó su informe sobre la situación de los derechos humanos y definitivamente. Uh, Moritz was first. I could be totally wrong, but I think this is Spanish. Yes, <laughs> this is Spanish. This is definitely Spanish. Uh, so, what would give it away to someone who has never studied Spanish? I think the uh, foul, full vowel ending uh, with yeah. O and R in the end. Um, I think for Castilian Spanish, so European Spanish, also the dental fricative, the, yeah. um, in certain uh, places. Yeah. I think that's very char characteristic. Very ca characteristic. Uh, uh -huh. And another thing is the characteristics of having all this, like, open sounding and, like, let's say, um, flat sounding vowels which actually immediately bring you into the roman sphere of languages and then you hear all those s's at the end which is a characteristic that comes from latin actually from the as accusative uh, from latin which was brought into spanish and pronounced in a quite linear and and clear way well, for example, if if you listen to Portuguese, it, it it's there there is the, the, that same a s o s plural, but it's pronounced in a totally different way. It's. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh, yeah, but yeah. So uh, you're talking about relationship of gr grammar and phonology, in some ways, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So, so for for that, I think that audio sample wouldn't be enough. You would need to understand the, the structure a little bit. So again, you would have to go into a, a deeper dive. But yeah, it's a good uh, 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 trait to 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 be able to distinguish Spanish from other languages. But the question is, yes, since it's uh, it's a Spanish language, a I said a Spanish language because we have many different varieties of, of yeah. Spanish. Maybe we could try to identify the. Uh, the region of the world it comes from. I don't have that information here, so that would be a wild guess, but let's listen to it, and maybe someone in the chat speaks that kind of Spanish, so they would be able to confirm. Let's listen to the, the sample. 
Amnistía Internacional publicó su informe sobre la situación de los derechos humanos y definitivamente es un informe que llama la atención por las características que tuvo durante el 2014. Tengo en línea telefónica desde Londres a Erika Guevara Rosas. Ella es directora para las Américas de Amnistía Internacional y le agradezco muchísimo su tiempo para La Voz de América. Moritz. Mm -hmm. I think I have a... Oh, okay. I, I didn't pass, so... I, oh, you didn't. Uh, I, uh, no, no. <laughs> I know what happened here. Leonardo, you buzzed in, but because you have two accounts that signed up, you have one on your computer and one on the, no, on the no, phone. I, I, I got out from the computer, so there's no account anymore. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we can just keep 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 going. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, the accent that we, we can hear here. Uh, hear. Any ideas, Moritz or Leonardo? It sounds like to me it sounds more like a Mexican area Spanish. Mexican, okay, okay. Uh, Moritz, what about you? Um. Yeah, I, I thought I heard um, the dental uh, fricative uh, in the example. Now I'm not really sure anymore. So I thought it would be Castilian Spanish, so European Spanish. But I am not quite sure anymore because that's the main uh, factor I use to distinguish between the two variants yeah. is uh, this sound. Yeah, I also think it, it was uh, Mexican, Mexican Spanish. It sounded almost like... Uh, um an excerpt from France 24 uh, in Espanol that they have yeah. this, this, this channel uh, where you can watch Fr uh, France 24 in Spanish. And I, she sounded like one of the, uh, the people who work there. Uh, I think that, but actually we have a caller, Miguel is going, uh, calling. So maybe we can uh, invite Miguel into, a conversa into the conversation uh, and see if uh, we were correct. I, I assume uh, Miguel can uh, know what we're talking about. Let's see. Let's add Miguel. Miguel, you are joining us now. Get ready. Hello. Hi, Miguel. Uh, hi, everyone. Sorry. Norbert, I once tried to call you before. Uh, so sorry if I was a bit ab abusive in that way that I was calling you uh, like a few uh, weeks ago. No, no worries. You know, I, I, uh, when I'm running the show, sometimes I'm not able to accept every call, you know, but, but just, so whoever is watching, just keep trying, you know, just keep trying. And oh. when I, when I can uh, uh, have you on, I will. So I'm glad you managed to 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 uh, connect today. So before we move on, before we move, uh, before actually we hear um, where are you calling from, did you hear what we were doing before? We were just yes, trying I, to guess I the was language. Paying some attention to the the chat. Um, uh, would you be uh, able to tell us uh, what kind of Spanish we uh, listened to? I think so. Uh, I, in my opinion, you're right about it being uh, European Spanish. It's European Spanish. It's possible, but because I had three years of Spanish uh -huh. and I'm also partially Spanish, I think that is my idea. But uh, it could be some uh, Spanish l uh, form of the language that it's close to European Spanish and still from America. So I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, we will probably never know. Maybe someone in the comments will confirm that if they recognize the, the accent. Uh, I, I think I think that uh, the European Spanish would have the th sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of th sound. Yeah. And I didn't hear that here in this this sample. So so it might be Mexican. So uh, Miguel, I think it's time uh, uh, for you to introduce yourself, uh, so we can get to know you. What uh, language do you want to introduce yourself in? You can I want to pick whatever. Mm -hmm. in, uh, Icelandic. Great. It's, my, it's one of my favorites. Okay, so let's let's do that. But I'll be f perfectly honest. First, I already met uh, Leonardo. I think uh, in the Discord. Oh. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> he knows three. me as Darth Vader or something like that. Three, three. Okay, yeah. that's that's good. It's good to know uh, that things are happening on the Discord server. So, Miguel, I'm very curious about that. Let's introduce yourself in Icelandic. Okay. Yo. Um, Stjomst, Jäger, uh, Jäger Miguel, uh, Jäger from uh, Portugal. Um, uh, in in Latin, um, Portugal uh, ert ert naumt ert naumt. Uh, Sunaven Ert um, Lusitania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically all I could say. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's great. <laughs> like, uh, that's why nice. I said that uh, it's very, 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 very small. But. Uh, but I, I, uh, we appreciate the effort. You know, Icelandic uh, uh, is a great language to learn, and it's also yeah. um, sometimes. Uh, um, Underrepresented often, uh, yeah. but but there is some there are some videos uh, uh, featuring Icelandic coming up uh, on the channel. I recently uh, yesterday I posted two mini challenges in Icelandic. I don't know if you see that, if you saw that. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some mini challenges in Icelandic, and there is more to come because we recorded lots of them. So you're going to be uh, offered mini challenges in Icelandic uh, gradually. But anyway, so at the moment, what we're doing here, we are playing the, the Guess the Language Challenge, right? And we've been mm -hmm. uh, listening to, to audio samples and uh, uh, trying try to identify the languages. So we're going to continue with another example. However, I don't think we're going to be using the buzz-in system because it's more troubled. <laughs> it's, it's not really as helpful as I thought it would be. So... Um, if when you want to say uh, something, when you want to ma make a guess, oh, just uh, raise your sorry, hand. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's because I have a, a cousin and he is uh, doing his um, typical children stuff. Okay, so uh, so Miguel, I think uh, there is not much noise happening, so that it, it's totally no. fine. Uh, if there is any. No. If there is any any like noise uh, happening, you can just mute yourself for the time when things are happening. But it's okay. It's okay now. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, uh, I will also keep an eye on that and uh, when, uh, and I can mute you if there is too much noise. So we don't hurt people's ear ears, you know? Uh, good. So let's get back into the challenge, everybody. Um, before making a guess, just raise your hand like this, and I will see who who did it first. Okay, right. I think that's going to be uh, the easiest way to deal with it. Oh wait, wait! Just to see the perspective, you can see my my hand raised. If I put the hand right, wait. If I put the hand here, you can see it. Perfect. Yeah, basically, uh, I see your chin, so you can just do it like this, or yeah, okay. or, or like something like that, <laughs> a body language. Right. Uh, this is a very wholesome YouTube you have here, uh, channel uh, Norbert. <laughs> thank you, really thank, like it. thank you, Miguel. Yeah. Uh, but it's wholesome because wholesome people are calling in, so that's that's very yeah, helpful. So you have to have <laughs> the original idea first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Miguel. So let's now move on to the next challenge because people are dying for another language sample. Um, uh, is it this um Yes, okay, let's listen. Te is Yave, keep on a vedbach, or posavalcio la cordae, no zagon, or poyas nevanu affere vatilix, ki naibi pripeliala tudi dod stopa, negdaniga papeja benedicta ses naistiga. Or zadu affere, naibi bu namrech, pona vedbach medio rauno, gayevski lobby. Boys au plio in moch unaiveci cerqui, od car ye papej. Franciszek postal. Uh, Miguel. I will. The 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 only thing that I could guess is that this is some kind of Baltic language, but uh, I don't think it is at the same time. But my idea is that this is Latvian. Latvian. It's not Latvian. It's not. Uh, Moritz. 
I would guess Romanian. It's not Romanian. Can we, a, can, uh -huh. can we listen to it again? Okay, let's listen to it. Te isjave ki pona vedbach o pozvalcio la kodaje no zagon o pojas nevanju afere vatilix ki najbi pripeljala tudi do odstopa nekdaniga papeža Benedikta XVI. U ozadju afere najbi bil namreč po navedbah medijev ravno gejevski lobi. Boj za vpliv in moč v največji crkvi, odkar je papež Frančišek postal voditelj največje verske skupnosti. Jaz, aha. Leonardo, ja. Maybe Romanš. Romanš, you said? Yeah. That's not Romanš, no. Um, yeah, let's see what people say in the chat. Uh, Tom says it's it's Polish. Harold also thinks it's Romanian. Uh, Boyan says Slovenian. No, Brian has no clue. Katusha says it's Croatian. Uh, yeah, and uh, anything else? Old Slavic. Laura says it's Old Slavic. Uh, Manfred says uh, Lithuanian. Oh, it was close. <laughs> it's not Lithuanian. It's actually Slovenian. 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 Yes, yes. Uh huh. It's Slovenian. Uh, so uh, Miguel, you were close. It's 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 uh, very very. It's uh, the one of the Balkan languages, we could yeah. say. Yeah. And we don't. I don't really know what they're talking about the, uh, in those samples. I think they're pretty um, uh, okay for YouTube. I think, uh, but anyways, because oh. they are from the language squad dot com, uh, the samples. So I think people just like upload s samples and someone approves them. Um, Okay, so yes, that was Slovenian. That was Slovenian. Okay. So that was a good one. I really like Slovenia. I've heard a lot of them in um, in an Italic forum, Italian forum. Uh huh. Uh, do you speak Italian? Uh, niente. But uh, I don't. I don't speak Italian. But uh, I like Italian, and I participate uh, in that forum quite often. But I have not uh, participated there in uh, one year or two. Or <laughs> but when I was there, I did participate often. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's good. So Slovenian, uh, you guys kind of w w were close. I think, Moritz, you thought it was Romanian be because of the Slavic influence mm -hmm. there. Uh, and Leonardo, you said what? Romansh, but because it's Romansh, that, that's that's it's a way off. Of, yeah, exactly. That's I know part why of the way Leonardo. Off. I know why you said uh, Romansh. It's because of the leaks, the the word leaks. It kind of reminds me of uh, looks, uh, Latin yeah. for light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Laura says that uh, now we know that uh, how to differentiate Slovenian. Now it sounds old and religious. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if, if Slovenian people are going to agree with that, but but yeah, there is there is many ways to identify languages. You know, some people use uh, the knowledge of phonology, um, and sometimes we just compare it to other languages. It doesn't sound like German, so it must be Danish, right? <laughs> uh, in my opinion, <laughs> Latvian and Lithuanian actually quite sound like Portuguese. Uh, oh. Italy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the they have a they have a, they use the word tu, which is you, just for you, and uh, they also use um, the some of their pronunciation is very interestingly close to Portuguese. But I understand why Lithuanian yes. is a very old Indo-European language, so it has a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, Lithuania is very, it's a very interesting language, actually, and uh, hopefully we're going to have it on the Ecolinguis channel at some point. I've been yeah. trying, I've been trying. Yeah, so if there's any Lithuanian watching right now and they want to be on the show, just let me know. Um, okay. 
So, so Miguel, I do hear some some noises in the background. So, what you uh, could it's do? Still, it's just for a small mo uh, moment. Um, I know. So, you know what you can do? You know what you can do? You can just mute yourself, okay? And whenever you want to say something, you unmute yourself, okay? That will be uh, this way because I kept you on on lower volume, but people started complaining that they couldn't hear you well. So it, that's a better solution. You just mute yourself and unmute when you're ready to speak. Um, and we can deal with the noise for a little bit, but if it's continuous, then it's a bit disturbing. That's fine. We can uh, play another sample. So let's focus uh, again. Um, ja, kas sa ikka veel töötad? Kas sa ei ole juba pensionil? Ja mida sa seal... Moritz? Okay, that's a 50-50 one for me. I would guess Finnish. It's not correct. It's not correct. Uh, so I'm going to play the, uh, play it again, uh, and uh, you guys uh, mm. give me a signal when you're ready. Ja, kas sa ikka veel töötad? Kas sa ei ole juba pensionil? Ja mida sa seal täpselt teed? Ja kui ka ohe sellise tee valmis tegemine aega võtab? Aga lähme nad... Uh, so let's try Miguel, because Moritz, you already had a chance. Miguel, what, what do you think it is? I think it is a Syrian. I could be wrong, but... That's wrong. That's wrong. Oh, That's God. not. You said Assyrian? Yeah, no, no. It's not uh, that. Uh, so, uh, Leonardo, do you want to make a guess? Uh, um, maybe. Uh, it, it sounds uh, um, Philo Ugric to me. It sounded close to maybe something like Estonian. That is correct. Estonian. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, that was the 50 yeah, 50 with Moritz. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, Estonian. We can listen to it one more time, real quick. Ja, kas sa ikka veel töötad? Kas sa ei ole juba pensionil? Ja mida sa seal täpselt teed? Ja kui ka ohe sellise tee valmis tegemine aega võtab? Aga lähme natuke ajast taga. Yeah, yeah. I hope they talk just about good things in there because <laughs> i have no idea what they're talking about yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it kind of reminds me that every once in a while what i do is i go um because i'm learning greek mm -hmm. every once in a while ah, cool every once in a while i i go to the deeple which is a google translator like machine and mm -hmm. I use it to write vulgar things in my diary in Greek. <laughs> for fanzies. Mm -hmm. Yes, for fanzies. To, to, lear, to learn uh, uh, all aspects of the language. Yes. So, yeah, um, actually Estonia, speaking of Estonia, I think I mentioned just before that we, uh, we are going to have an episode featuring Estonian and Finnish. Yes, coming up very soon. It's already recorded, so that's going to be happening. Uh, <clears throat> Estonia. So maybe, maybe then after you you watch that episode, you will be able to to hear those languages uh, at the same time, and will be compare. You will be able to compare uh, how they sound and how to distinguish them. Uh, but let let me just have a quick look at the the chat. Uh, what people were saying. Uh, lots of people uh, thought it was Finnish. Miss uh, Irene, I thought it was Finnish or Anti. Oh, Anti uh, had a good guess. Uh, Vuro. I think it's uh, one of the minority languages. Um, we talked about this. Uh, do you know about this language, the the the, the Vuro Vuro one? Never heard about it. Um, I think that. Uh, Though we, in Europe, and even now outside of Europe, we have a lot of go cool languages. Uh, for example, in the Middle East, uh, definitely uh, Aramaic, which is basically what I meant with Assyrian. Mm -hmm. is, uh, it's also very beautiful, like church-like almost language, because it's one of the languages that the Bible was written in. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a Koine Greek, also known as Common Greek. Then you have uh, Aramaic, which is the Assyrian language. Uh, and then uh, basically in Babylon, they spoke Assyrian uh, and other languages. And then Hebrew. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, 
actually Assyrian and Hebrew are not very far related. So uh, potentially a Hebrew speaker could understand like 40% of an Assyrian, unless there's a strange pronunciation there. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, they're closely related languages. Okay, so, so you, uh, you are interested in ancient languages. Yes, basically. conservative that's, that's languages. Thing. That's mm-hmm. why I like Icelandic. That's why I've heard a few songs in Lithuanian, though not many. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, I also like hard languages. It doesn't have to be old, but mm-hmm. languages that ha- haven't changed yeah. that much over time. That what you yes, mean? Yes, that's mm-hmm. my favorite. Yeah, but but the the language uh, Anti was was talking about is the language. Oh, sorry about that. Let me just mm-hmm. quickly fix this. Uh, Oh no. Yeah, basically I wanted to show you the map and everything because I, I have it open. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so that's how it looks like. Yeah, so Miguel, if you could mute yourself maybe because we, we hear the, the noises. So here is the Vudu language, and this is a dialect of South Estonian belonging to the Finnic branch of the Uralic language family. Traditionally, it has been considered a dialect of the Estonian language, along with all varieties of South Estonian. However, many linguists consider South Estonian to be an independent Finnic language. Okay, so we just learned something new today, uh, and this is the region where it's uh, it's spoken roughly in the Vudu county uh, of Estonia. So that's great. So we just learned something new, uh, everybody. Yeah. So people really thought it was it was Finnish. So 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 it's kind of um, good that you identified the language family at least. That's definitely a good thing. Mm, okay. uh, as a side, uh, as a side note, uh, yeah, it was very awkward of me to to say it was a Syrian. Uh, then again, it uh, I, I don't uh, I don't study Finnic languages, um, so I I couldn't recognize anything. Yeah, I mean it's it's fine, you know. It, it's uh, that's the idea of guessing the languages. Like we have no idea. We, it's we we sometimes have to give a wild guess, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what we can do next is we, we can listen to another language sample. Uh, so you guys concentrate. Uh, what, Leonardo, are you ready? <laughs> I can't hear you. Did I, did I mute you? No, you, you just muted yourself. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. We cannot hear you. Uh, uh, Leonardo. Uh, did that? Yeah, uh, Leonardo, you muted yourself, so you have to unmute yourself. If <laughs> you cannot hear us, <laughs> wait, L- Leonardo, I cannot hear you. So, Leonardo, rejoin, rejoin, okay, rejoin. Yeah. Go back and uh, and then rejoin. Hmm. Yes, we're gonna wait for Leonardo to rejoin. Uh... I have a I have a question though. The, it might not be uh, episode related, but uh, we have here an honor to to have this. Oh, wow. uh, uh, it's um, what's your name, my friend? Uh, the second one. Moritz. 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 It's, uh, Moritz. it's an honor to Moritz. Meet someone mm-hmm. from Frisia. Like, uh, uh, it is a very beautiful land. I have never been there, but I, I've heard uh, many, many great things about it. It's North you... Frisia, right? North yeah. Frisia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's cool because you, you fought, uh, you fought everyone the up north and uh, 
and then you have it's a, not a, not a Miguel because, because there there uh, maybe more it's a good opportunity to to t tell people yeah. about North Frisia <laughs> and uh, and uh, the other Frisia is just called Frisia or yeah or West Frisia or oh, West Frisia, Frisia. yeah mm -hmm. um yeah uh, in the year 800 circa 800 uh, a couple of Frisians uh, moved over the North Sea uh, into the border region between Germany and Denmark onto uh, the North Frisian Islands, as they are now called, um, which was former Danish territory. And mm -hmm. um, so we don't have a lot of history common with the other Frisians, with the West and the East Frisians, which are uh, in the Netherlands and uh, the lower Saxony state of Germany. So we're ge geographically a little bit further away and a little bit more isolated. So our history doesn't have as much in common with the other and, Frisians. And the oh, language is... Cool. Yeah. And the language, I must say, is actually quite different because if you look at what well, the language, um, the language that is spoken by the um, uh, Frisian people in the Netherlands, it really see is really really similar to Dutch. I mean, I can understand ninety percent of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Frig the Frisian languages in general are very similar to the standard language of the the country which they are spoken in. So basically, you can say West Frisian is very similar to Dutch. Uh, East Frisian is very similar to German, and uh, North yeah. Frisian is very similar to Danish. So it's you can say that Danish and North Frisian are semi mutual intelligible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, thank you for clarification, Moritz, because it's you know, p people definitely heard about Frisia and North Frisia is not as known. So so that's good. Uh, uh, so yeah, Moritz, if you could uh, no, Miguel, if you could just keep muting yourself when you don't speak, that would be very helpful. Uh, yes, and we can try another sample. Um, yeah, let's try another sample. Sorry for all of this sound. Uh, that's um, it's a it's a bit awkward. I know it's happening live, so you know, you know, I I always expect all kinds of situations. So I am trying to find out the best ways to deal with them. And if you mute yourself when you don't speak, that's that's going going to be very helpful for everybody. Great, so let's listen to the uh, following sample. Alle porte della seconda guerra mondiale, Marcello Clerici, spia della polizia fascista, si reca a Parigi in viaggio. <laughs> okay, I think this is very clear. Uh, um, uh, Miguel? <laughs> Miguel? Uh, this is either literally the Italian language, uh, uh, aka the north, north central um dialect of italian yeah. the one that it's written in la divina commedia and also the one that yeah. the modern italians most of them speak or uh, it's uh, basically more southern dialect of that but i don't know uh, uh, wait, um, in, in specifying me as a, an italian native speaker i must say that the the Dialects in which La Divina Commedia is writ uh, has been written actually um, uh, is the one which is right now considered standard Italian. And basically, but what if if you must if you if, if we should historically consider that language, I would more go on the Tuscan vernacular that is spoken right now, which is di quite different from that, mm -hmm. but it has got all sorts of characteristics that come from there. So actually, it, 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 it's my vernacular, by the way. Yeah, I want to say that you are bi you're a little bit biased, uh, Leonardo. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, apart from the bias, I, I, I think actually standard Italian comes from here. Mm -hmm, so in mm -hmm. my opinion, it was more of a northern uh, dialect uh, uh -huh. stuff. Uh, northern accent, that's what I wanted to say. Not mm -hmm. uh, not the southern as uh yeah yeah, yeah. because tuscany yeah. well it's definitely north yeah, of, it of of uh, of rome but it's still like central italy right yeah exactly no um. and it, it it just was 
it, uh, it, it's, I know that that remark was a bit biased, but I wanted to uh, uh, make the northern notice more of like, uh, yeah. Yes, of course, of course. I mean, uh, uh, it's obviously it's obviously Italian, right? So <laughs> good on that, yeah. Um, and yeah, with Italian, I think that if we had one of the Italian dialects or, or regional languages, that would be a bit more challenging. But if uh, uh, if you've watched my videos before, you've been exposed to quite a lot of different uh, regional languages of Italy, so you yeah. might be able to tell them apart by now. Uh, okay, good. So let's move on to the to the the next one, then. Um, it was a very beautiful pronunciation, and uh, I really liked that. Uh, but as soon as I heard it, it had to be something from Italy, even <clears throat> if not uh, literally standard Italian. It had to be something close. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yes. So this one is going to be more challenge. It's either going to be more challenging or it's going to be super easy. So we're going to see because I. I have no idea. I just see the, the potential answers. I, I see them displayed, so it's either or. Let's listen to it. Considerando que los Estados miembros se han comprometido a asegurar en cooperación con la Organización de las Naciones Unidas. Of course, Leonardo. <laughs> it's clear in Spanish. Yes, of course. But what language is it? What accent is it? Yet, Miguel? You have to unmute yourself, yeah. Um, uh, it's is it really Castilian Spanish? Isn't it Galician? Like, yeah, it is. Uh, it is uh, Spanish. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Then I was uh, being wrong just because. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, we've got Spanish and uh, uh, um, Latin American Spanish. People say Laura South American Spanish. Latin American Spanish, uh, it's very generic term, Latin American Spanish, because there, there are differences between yeah. Costa Rican Spanish and Mexican Spanish. They're very subtle. Uh, I think you could tell by uh, mostly it's vocabulary, like the, the, the phrases that, that people use. For yeah. example, in Mexico, people would say cachido, right? For like how, how cool cachido. And in Costa Rica, people would say pura vida all the time. Um, yeah. uh, or chevere in Colombia. In a, in a European Spanish, uh, we usually use guay for guay. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 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 in vocabulary, there are differences in vocabulary and some pronunciation also. Like um, in Costa Rica, I know that they pr pronounce R a little bit more like American R, Costa Rica. Something like that. instead of saying Costa Rica, they would say Costa Rica. Uh, yeah, so those are the differences that I know person personally, but I'm sure there are more. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that was an easy one. That, that's why I said it's either super easy, which it turned out to be super easy. So let's just yeah. move on to, to one more. And this one is definitely going to be more challenging for you guys. So l listen in. И сега към международната конференция Поведенчески финанси и капиталови пазари, която протича вече втори ден в Аделаида. Организатор и модератор е професор Петко Калев, директор на Леонардо. Румънин. Not Romanian. Maltese. Not Maltese. Moritz. Any guesses? Uh, a Romanian? A Romanian? Nope. Whoa, a Romanian. That was an awesome mention, by the way. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, it's neither Romanian or or uh, a Romanian. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see uh, what people say in the comments. Uh, so we've got uh, Artemis says it's Serbian. Uh, Vladimir uh, suggests uh, uh, Macedonian. Um, Ildar suggests be Bulgarski. Bulgarian. Bulgarski. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, Serbian, Bulgarian, 
Romanian. Romanian, Romanian, of course, is not correct. Macedonian. Thinking again, I think it's Esperanto because it sounds like a Latin language, but it doesn't uh, sound like Portuguese because I am Portuguese. So I would understand if it is Brazilian or Portuguese from Portugal. Yeah. It's not Esperanto, Esperanto you said. Uh, no, 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 no. No, so. Did any of those guesses though, uh, 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 of people in the chat narrowed down the, the guess for you guys? I wonder how much the South uh, Slavic languages sound like Romance languages to me. Um, <laughs> maybe I had, I, had, I had just had the wrong idea where, uh, the, uh, regarding phonology. Um, so it sounded like a very harsh Romance language to me with very harsh consonants. Um, compared to other Romance languages, but um, I thought I heard enough vocabulary that I think it's a Romance language, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So the correct answer is, let me pick one of one uh, from the chat. It's Bulgarian. So Beric was right. It's Bulgarian. <laughs> Impressive. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes, like like, like all languages, <laughs> like like all languages. Yes, Bulgarian is also beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not all of them. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's a. I guess it's a very subjective matter. You know, which languages are beautiful, which are not. It kind of sounds like a mixture between a very. It's it's the. Like if it was if it was a Romance language, uh, the the other other choice that I would pick up would be Sardinian, mm -hmm. because it sounds so much like a Romance language, an extremely conservative Romance language, that mm -hmm. it would be my other choice. But uh, it's impressive but that I... it is Bulgarian. Never thought yeah. it would uh, sound like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But actually, um, um. It couldn't have been Sardinian because I had uh, quite a, a bit of exposure because I have a friend from Sardinia and when he speaks, he speaks fluent Sardinian, obviously, and you always hear these um, S sounds, which quite often are more like uh, Z. They are more sloppy, let's say, than what a S sound would be, but it's a bit of a uh, of a way between the uh, z and the s sound, and you always usually hear um, quite a lot of plurals and stuff which end in a because the it's the characteristics they write a s but then they add this a from prantaza for example. So it's 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 frequent. It's frequent to hear that, and you hear all sorts of words which remind you of Latin. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, indeed, because uh, Sardinian is basically the most conservative uh, daughter yeah, of exactly. Latin. <laughs> yeah, we have We have the Sardinian <laughs> episode, by the way, the Sardinian <laughs> episode is on the channel. <laughs> because uh, we've covered so many of the, the Italian regional languages that uh, the, the regional languages of Ital Italy we covered the, the Sardinian also. That was a very interesting one. And it's not as as easy to understand for speakers of other Romance languages as it seems. Latin yeah, was much exactly. more, more much easier than, than Sardinian. Because, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Sardinian is its own thing. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes. So, guys, uh, my suggestion is we're going to do maybe one more. That will be the, the last one because I have to wrap up the show uh, uh, now. Uh, so let's do the the last one and see what that is going to, that what that's going to be. Yeah. Let's see. So, the semen ga kono wakusei no doko de dono yo ni shite umareta ka toyu hodo no hihon teki na gimon. Okay, so all of you have guesses. So let's start with Miguel. You were first. Uh, Nihongo. Uh, in English. <laughs> Japanese. Uh, Leonardo. Japanese. And Moritz. Japanese. Yes, you guys are all correct. This is Japanese. That was a very easy one. 
Uh, I suppose so. Was it obvious? Was it that obvious? Yes. It was not obvious. Yeah, the form of speaking. Form yeah, that's true. Like everybody in the chat immediately went for Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, point. Uh, uh, yeah, Japanese. Mm -hmm. Arigato. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> Nihongo. Nihongo. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good one. That is a good one. Uh, the, 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 the language of Arigato. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, Leonardo, you started saying something about Japanese not being that obvious. Well, uh, obvious, yes, but it was not, let's say, obvious. It was clear. I mean, and there's a slight difference there, in my opinion, because it was clearly sounding Japanese, but, um, you know, there are um, uh, uh, all sorts of languages that I, I had to listen for quite, um, let's say, for a, a, some extra seconds to realize it being Japanese and not sort of a Okinawan stuff, which could be similar, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, because this one was so easy, let's just do uh, uh, one more, the, the quick one. But but um, uh, let's see, let's see. Mais non, le disque n'est pas sympathique. Il est fondamental, car vous savez ce qui est un disque? Notre galaxie. La voie lactée. Oui, oui, allez sur Google, voir des images, c'est difficile de trouver un disque plus parfait que ça, une galaxie. Mais pourquoi est-ce que la galaxie est un disque? Pourquoi pas un cube, un losange, je sais pas. Okay, so Leonardo, you go first. Quebec French. Uh, French from Quebec. Well, it's definitely French. It is French. <laughs> so you guys probably figured that out also, right? Yes, as a as a as a native speaker of two of two Romance languages, it uh, it was kind of obvious that it was French, I think. But um, I also thought about Canadian. I was kind of analyzing it because um, they have a more uh, conservative form of French. And also, it was generally more of a, don't take this the wrong way, but uh, if any Canadian is watching, like, I, I really like your French, and I need to hear more about it. But uh, some, peop some people from Paris would probably call it peasant French or something like that. Like peasant French from the 17th century. But I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it that. It is beautiful, just like modern French. But it's just a bit different. And it's mm -hmm. more conservative as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I mean, I noticed that I sound, which is typical, and the, uh, that, that, that nasal sound, which is quite different from modern French, from modern European French, uh, that, that, that really got me on the... Um, Quebec French because I'm quite uh, uh, exposed to it. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's how we were able to tell. It's just it's uh, like it's an uh, instinct for you, Leonardo. One of the yeah. things that we it's it's normal. Leonardo is is all is an Italian, so he's Lita yeah. uh, Italian and Dutch. So he he immediately like this understands when someone speaks French because. Italian and French are some of the closest languages yeah. in Europe. Yeah, actually, so, uh, I cannot, actually, I I um, I joined. I speak French, but I joined the guess because I would have been able to tell this difference between European French and uh, Quebec French. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have guessed if I just said French because that wouldn't have been fair because I'm fluent in it. Yes, uh, you found immediately the intrinsicacies of the of the language. Yeah. It's impressive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So the the last two were kind of easy, but we made it a little bit more challenging by trying to explain the uh, uh, the, the, the identify the the, di the particular variety of French. And Maurice, did you want to add something? Yes, I. Uh... French is my only Romance language that I can speak. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, 
Uh, it's definitely French. Um, it's definitely also not Parisian French. Um, no. It sounded a bit a bit similar to what my cousins speak. They live in the French speaking part of Switzerland. Um, but this could also be a coincidence uh, because some French dialects, uh, I would say Parisian French has a very, has very soft plosive sounds. Yeah. And um, if they are a little bit harsher, it could be, yeah, through contact with any other language, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it could, it could be contact to Italian or German via Switzerland. It could be also with maybe English uh, uh, in uh, Canada. Uh, I, I don't know, but it's basically a non-standard variety of, uh, French, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Norbert, if you, if I could, I would just add a small tidbit about my own native language. Uh -huh. I think it is appropriate because it is related to French. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Portuguese from Portugal is often uh, considered to sound like um, Russian to some people, and I will explain why it sounds like Russian or Polish, yeah, like I your native language. It's because of the sh, sh sounds, yeah. and also the, um, the nasal sounds like own in um, own, for um, example, which yeah. means dog. Yeah. Also, there's another reason why it sounds like that. It's because modern Portuguese, according to some scholars, Sounds like uh, sounds like this because it had a lot of eighteenth um, century and nineteenth century influence from court French. So it uh, from the thousands and eight hundreds, for example. So it uh, evolved this kind of uh, continental pronunciation, and because there's also other reasons why por this Portuguese and even Portuguese from Brazil in some regions sounds so harsh. Well, it sounds like that because we had a lot of different invasions that affected our pronunciation. Yeah. For example, uh, Southern Portuguese, it's a bit, might uh, have some influences from Arabic. So uh, it could share some sounds because of that. Also, Portuguese in general is, um, it's a very typical language because it, uh, it, what, what happened was that Latin came to a already settled region. So it's basically, so Portuguese ends up being a hybrid of Latin, but it's very, very, very Latin, really, uh, because yeah. it, ha it still has around 80% Latin words. Mm -hmm. But the other influences made it the way it is. So uh, that is why yeah. it is, um, it is still a Romance language, obviously, but it has around 600 um at least 600 Arabic words. Mm -hmm. Also, it was partially settled by Germanic peoples, like the Visigoths from Sweden and the Swebi from southern Germany. So, in partially, it had native Iberian populations. It had, uh, um, sorry, it had uh, Germans uh, from different regions. It had Italians, and it had some Arabs and some Moors. So ultimately, that's why um, Portuguese from Portugal is the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. True, yeah. it's yes. It's so interesting. on that note, we can wrap up the show. Thank you very much, uh, Claudio, for, for uh, calling in. Miguel, I'm sorry, Miguel. Miguel, uh, thank you for calling in. Yeah. And Moritz and Leonardo. Uh, um, by the way, nice to see you again, Miguel. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was uh, it was very good to see you again, Leonardo and Norbert uh, and uh, and Moritz, especially Norbert this time. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you a lot for uh, for accepting my call because yeah. uh, I was always very interested in joining your and um, showing up. Great. Uh, uh, I'm glad this show. Uh, happened and we had some interesting yeah. change of things change of format a little bit we did the the guest the language challenge but i feel like we all, we've also learned some 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 interesting things about languages while playing it so so that's and that's a good thing i hope uh, that presenting myself in mandarin made it more interesting because actually it gives a, an, an asiatic touch to the to, to the live stream we had today <laughs> 
absolutely yes. absolutely uh, and of course you guys can continue uh, uh, on discord the discord community is, is open 24 7 so everybody can join and i will try to uh, i will try to go to discord as we speak but it uh, it wouldn't be for a long time because i'll have dinner <laughs> then uh, then we can yeah. talk again if you want exactly everybody go have dinner now uh, <laughs> i'm gonna have some soup also so everybody thank you so much again uh I w next week we're going to be streaming on the germanic languages hub so if you're into this kind of thing just follow uh, uh us there on the germanic languages hub next uh wednesday have a good evening everybody take care and uh, see you later.